Is there nowhere in London where I can meditate in quiet and in peace? Have you not tried Marlebone Station, my son? I usually walk to Marlebone from Paddington, but I came by underground today to see this little reminder that once the underground station was called Great Central. For well, that is the name of the last mainline railway to forge its way into London. And above us, standing proudly on the Marlborough Road, is the old Hotel Great Central, one of the grandest of all the great London railway hotels. Ah, but there appears to be a station up this side street, Great Central Street. Hmm, I think that's a clue. Here we are outside Great Central's Folly of 1899, a railway station built slightly too late. And yet, towards the end of the 20th century, it suddenly came back into its own. Definitely a story of, if not rags to riches, then lack of care to maybe a little bit of love. But anyway, Marlebone, it's a beautiful, small, little hidden railway station hiding behind the now landmark once Great Central Hotel both built at the same time and really it's uh, it's a testament to bravado and hubris which actually didn't really come off as traffic never really did what it ever was supposed to do and yet here we stand and it's still here the station itself was built in 1899 and they spent a lot of money getting the rails to come in through tunnels underneath Lord's Cricket Ground. There wasn't that much left for building a station. And so it was left to the engineers of the railway itself to design and have built this railway station. They had the brief to keep it simple, but add some adornments. As you come upon the Port Cachere, whilst it looks grand from a distance, closer inspections shows exactly what that speck reflects. A few adornments, but really just some iron holding up a roof to keep the rain off the coaches. And off the Port Cachere, the old booking hall is now a Marks and Spencers. But the old hall is still there, behind the drinks and the snacks. I'm so pleased that none of this has been ripped out. And stepping out into the concourses isn't just throwbacks to 1899 that we see. The little red and blue stripes remain, even though Network South East was disbanded in 1994. But let's step back outside for a moment to walk in under the terracotta lined archway. And outside we can see the lettering dates from the network southeast days, as those three stripes, they're still there. On re-entering the station, the L-shaped layout of concourse and platforms is clear to see. In 1899 the station opened with just four platforms, but the concourse was laid out to accommodate the intended expansion to 16. And over a hundred years later, we now have just six platforms, a far cry from the lofty dreams of the Great Central Railway. There's a pretty decent selection of shops and eateries in the concourse, all to be found under this transverse roof that looks more like the roof of a northern factory than a grand London terminus. One of the fears of the good people of St John's Wood was that the railway would bring the uncultured north right into the city. And maybe it did. Near to this west entrance are the Victoria and Albert refreshment rooms. And I think I'm ready for some refreshment. I really enjoyed the hour that I've just wandered around Marlborough. Uh, it really is a hidden gem. If you're ever in this area, then even if you're not catching the train, you can maybe pop here and have a pint and uh, just generally enjoy the ambience. I think the story uh, of the gentleman needing somewhere quiet to meditate and try Marlborough so kind of fits. And uh, yeah, it's a very nice place to just put your feet up and uh, while away 20 minutes until your train's due to depart. Let's have a look at our route for today. Once we've got out of London Marlebone and through the London suburbs, we'll pass through Beaconsfield and High Wycombe and then through the Chiltern Hills on northwest to Bicester, King's Sutton, Banbury, and then a flurry of stations at Leamington, Warwick and Warwick Parkway before we enter the Greater Birmingham area at Dorridge, Solihull and finally into Birmingham Moor Street. Today's journey will be 112 miles or 181 kilometres and it'll take us just shy of two hours. 
Marlebone handles about 16 million passengers a year. By comparison, its nearest neighbour, Euston, has about 45 million. Platforms 5 and 6 were added in 2006 as part of Chilton's Evergreen 2 project. My train for Birmingham will be departing from Platform 3 today and will be made of a two-car and a three-car Class 168 multiple unit. And here is my train in Chilton's nicely understated grey-on-grey -grey livery. So here's our Class 1682, built by Adtrans Bombardier between 98 and 2004. They've got a top speed of 160 kilometers per hour or 100 miles per hour and we will reach that speed on this journey to Birmingham. These units have been refurbished since production, although as we'll see, they still might need a bit more TLC. Chilton's 168s are fitted with a 2 plus 2 standard seating throughout with a mix of table and airline style seats. This forward facing airline seat will do very nicely, thank you. Well, even though it's second class, legroom is excellent. These appear to be the same Chapman seats that we get on the local Class 150s around Exeter, although these do feature a sturdy, if small, metal tray table and the cargo net on the seat back. Up above, there's a couple of coat hooks, but no blinds or reading lights. Definitely standard class today. And there's one three pin plug for both seats to share. These seat cushions and coverings do seem comfortable and as you'll have heard from me before I do prefer an understated moquette design. Nothing too garish please. And with what looks like fairly decent lumbar support and a headrest that makes up our seat for today. Right then let's be off to Birmingham. And we start off by tunnelling under Lord's Cricket Ground. A brief pop out at South Hampstead where we pass over the lines heading into Euston. And finally we're out of the Great Central Tunnels at Finchley Road. Where we can indulge in a little bit of backyard snooping. Passing Wembley Light Maintenance Depot reminds me I really should try out Chilton's Class 68 loco hold service to Kidderminster. West Ryslip marks the end of London Transport Central Line. Crikey, it's posh round here. Golf clubs have their own station. Beaconsfield station was opened in 1906 and is on a section of the line that was shared between the Great Western and the Great Central Railways. Now as we're leaving London, we're entering the Chilton Hills from which the train company takes its name. As the station sign says, High Wycombe used to be the junction for southbound trains to Marlow and Maidenhead. There's a fair bit of engine noise now as we climb out of High Wycombe Station to cross the Chilterns. HS2 will pass underneath in a 16 km long tunnel. Right, time for a short walk to the toilet. This one's the fairly compact toilet, but it does come with the reassuringly manual lock and there's also a handy coat hook. And the soap, the water and the dryer were working fine when I used them. There's a litter bin and a very sparkly clean toilet considering we're quite late in the day. Toilet paper completes the set. Well done Chilton Railways.
and we're still rattling along through the countryside of the decent lick. Just south of Bicester, the Chiltern line to Oxford peels off to our left, and the east-west line passes under us, maybe one day getting all the way to Cambridge again. Bicester North dates from 1910, and the architecture is very similar to what we just saw in High Wycombe. Just before King Sutton we are joined by the Great Western Line from Oxford. There's been a station at Banbury since the 1850s, but the current station was rebuilt in the 1950s. As it's quiet on the train, let's move to one of the bays of four seats. The way the table extends is quite unique in my experience, and it certainly makes seat access easier. But things go downhill when you look below. Boy, there's all manner of stains down here. Leamington Spa Station is an Art Deco beauty from 1939, although we only get glimpses at platform level as we pass through. Unlike Leamington Spa, Warwick Station has a simple structure dating from the 1850s. Warwick Parkway was opened in the year 2000 to provide extra parking for Leamington and Warwick commuters to encourage them to use the train. And then it's time to race the cars along the M40 motorway. Lincoln, you've missed it, but that was the Lapworth Link, which runs between the Grand Union and the Stratford-upon-Avon canals. So as we pull into Dorridge, we're getting quite close to Birmingham now, so time to talk about what this all cost. Well, I managed to get an adult advanced single with my rail card for £4.20, so ordinary price of £6.40 or €7.40, making this a very competitive route for a journey between London and Birmingham. Well, let's take a final little wonder as we're coming into Birmingham. And something I've not seen on a train before is that Chiltern are splitting their litter bins between general waste and recyclable waste. And we're literally seeing the bright lights of the city as we approach Moore Street. And we arrive at Moore Street on time. Our Class 168 will now continue just one more stop to Birmingham Snow Hill, where it will terminate. But we'll be staying here at Moore Street to sample the delights of this very unusual station. So here I am, right at the end of Platform 3 of Birmingham Moor Street, an almost one-of-a-kind station, a station that's almost frozen in time, because actually that's what happened to it. It was closed and rather than get demolished, it was mothballed. And then, with a grant, the station was brought back to life, but not as a modern station. Almost kept in the style and the, the signage of the 
1930s days of when it was a great western station and it sure is interesting. The concourse has been lovingly restored and actually I've got a few minutes before I need to press on to New Street so maybe it's just time to have a coffee and enjoy this space. The coffee shop known as the Centenary Lounge keeps the 1930s Art Deco theme beautifully and I'd certainly like to pay tribute to the Moore Street Station Historical Society. I'm so pleased that their hard work and dedication has kept this station in this wonderful state. Well done. And that concludes this little tale of two stations. I hope you've enjoyed this journey from London Marlbone up to Birmingham Moore Street. It's certainly one I've been looking forward to taking for quite some time. If you've enjoyed this video then please give it a like and also consider subscribing to the channel. I release a trip report every Friday. In the meantime from the beautiful Birmingham Moore Street station it's goodbye and thanks for watching.